these are animals that can take alligators, adult deer, that kind of thing. You'll see, you know, just how cryptic they are. They also are a, an ambush predator that relies on that camouflage. Their defense is also to wait. But yeah, it, it's very common when we open up a, a large snake. Anything over 100 pounds always has hooves in it. And their ability to expand their, their mouth is pretty Just astounding. their jaw. You said you found a, a female python with 89 eggs? 89 developing eggs. That's one of our higher counts. You know, our large females that we euthanize in the field in necropsy, they almost always have white-tailed deer inside them. Well, you know, we're pretty much in the middle of Big Cypress Swamp in this really, really wet area. Water's all the way up to my thighs. This is the battlefield against invasive Burmese pythons. This is the front line. To get here, wildlife biologist Matthew McAllister walks a little further, a little longer, and in a wilder place than most would ever dare. Here's your native. Here's a moccasin. McAllister is with the National Park Service, based out of Big Cypress Preserve, on the hunt for Florida's public enemy number one. Burmese pythons are not good for us. They are a huge problem for us to figure out. We're just, we're just getting going. For miles and miles, we hiked. On this morning, we were lucky. A cold front kept bugs at bay and humidity low. A cool breeze at our backs. It's beautiful through here. The trees, where the light's coming in, the sun, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's also very wild. It's an understatement. It's gonna get a little bit deeper. When we stop, the swamp, eerily quiet, except for the faint beep of McAllister's radio tracking device. It pings the frequency from an implant inside the snake. I think it's in the marsh. Four tagged male Burmese pythons called scout snakes are on the agenda. And a python is in a tree right in front of me. Other pythons that they haven't tracked could be in this water. They can hold their breath for several minutes, up to 30 minutes. This is breeding season, the one and only time each year that McAllister's team can follow the men to find the women. So having a transmitted male or several transmitted males and a transmitted female can allow us hopefully over time to see how they're locating each other. We're building up our female roster, particularly breeding females. Are they gonna be the category of the population that we most need to understand? Um, reproductive females are what drives a population's dynamic. Four years of tracking has led to more questions than answers, and the work is hard. Nature gives nothing away for free. Tracking even these tag snakes is a challenge. If you wanna come up, we'll try to see if we can show you the animal before it sneaks out. So it's likely to be underneath this debris resting. Do you see the animal? Can't see it, but there's a 10 and a half foot male right here in the brush. McAllister's team is made up of two research interns from the University of Florida. Lisa McBride and Daniel Fleeler fan out. With any luck, they or we might just step on that big female snake. Here, since you can't see the ground, you might actually just have to kick it. All this is focusing on understanding what role they're playing here, understanding how they use the landscape. Ideally, our big focus is vital rates, you know, focusing on reproduction and survival, and understanding that will help us to understand the python population as a whole. The Everglades ecosystem is massive, and another question researchers are working to answer, where will pythons go next, or better yet, where are they now, and we just don't know. Recent data indicates the population is expanding to the north and west, sightings peppered up the spine and both coasts. 
1979, the first python was discovered in the Everglades. Native to Southeast Asia, many came here during the exotic pet trade, escaped, or were released into the wild. Now 40 years of unknowns, like how many pythons did we walk past and not see? How many are here? Hundreds, thousands, tens, or hundreds of thousands? McAllister tells me any estimate is a guess. Most of the questions you ask me, the answer is I don't know. However many there are, they are decimating the animal population. Studies show that pythons have wiped out 95% of native mammals across their established range. Rabbits and foxes have disappeared. Pythons are built to survive, breed, and kill, now trying to topple alligators as the new masters of the glades. But new research is shedding light on how pythons interact and how native wildlife is starting to react to them. I've collected about a 65-pound female. She had the signs of a non-lethal bear attack, you know, a set of canine punctures through the side with radiating claw scars. And the brave bobcat you see in this video is the first ever documentation of any animal in Florida preying on python eggs. When the bobcat returns to raid the nest again, the python is back guarding it. The invader and native bobcat face off. Undeterred and unafraid, the bobcat takes a swipe at the snake. And this x-ray shows baby pythons in the stomach of a cottonmouth. Humans are doing their part too. Since 2013, the Conservancy of Southwest Florida has removed more than 25,000 pounds of snake through their tracking program. If you think about it, this apex predator doesn't grow to nearly 19 feet, weighing 100 plus pounds without eating a lot. Last year's Python Challenge netted 223 snakes, and the South Florida Water Management District's Python Elimination Program pays an hourly rate to hunters with a bonus for size. Over the past five years, they've removed more than 7,200 Burmese pythons. Oh yeah, it's in there. The last time we did this track, this animal was in this marsh. He was basking and when we approached, he slid into the water. We heard him slide, but we never could see him. Try not to scare the python. That direction, 38 and 50. So the research to understand them and to stop them continues. Between me and you, Mike. He's probably just under the surface. He's not gonna hurt anybody. He's about to go, ready? We didn't find a big female snake like the ones that you see in these pictures, but a recent hunt did. She'll be tagged and released, a new member of McAllister's team, a double agent slithering through life with someone always watching, and one day help wipe out her own kind in Florida. There won't be a silver bullet for this or any other invasive species that we challenge, that we're challenged by, and people have to invest careers and resources and Sometimes you have to catch a break on top of all that hard work. In the Everglades, Michael Paluska with photojournalist Reed Moeller, ABC Action News.